Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Today's video is a course review video. So as you may know, I was taking two classes this past fall 2020 semester. And in today's video, I'm only gonna review one of them. And I am going to be reviewing CS7638, which is Artificial Intelligence for Robotics, formerly known as Robotics AI Techniques. Let's get started. So to preface, this was my first semester doing Georgia Tech's online master's in computer science, so I don't really have any other semesters or many courses to, to compare it to. Um, but I do want to give a general overview of the course. According to omscentral.com, this average difficulty is around 3 out of 5, average workload 12.6 hours a week, and the average rating is 3.94, which indicates that it is relatively well liked out of all of the course offerings in the program. So according to the course website, the goals of this class are to learn from Sebastian Thrun, who is the leader of Google and Stanford's autonomous driving team, how to program all of the major systems of a robotic car, including basic methods in artificial intelligence, including probabilistic inference, planning and search, localization, tracking, mapping and control, all with a focus on robotics. With that being said, I have no real interest in robotics at all, and I only took this class just to get a little AI warm-up and just to see what the programming assignments would be like in an online program. So as for the instructional team, Dr. Sebastian Thrun is the course creator. He's also the co-founder of Udacity, apparently. Um, and he is the one that is recording and narrating the pre-recorded lectures. I do want to say that those lectures are pretty old. Uh, according to YouTube, it was probably recorded in 2014, though I don't think the material itself gets outdated that quickly. Uh, in terms of the actual instructor, it was Jay Summit, and he is the professor who handles the actual logistics of the class, since Dr. Thrun doesn't have any involvement with the actual semester. There's also numerous, to numerous TAs who are all very good and very helpful. Um, and I would say that the pre-recorded lectures from Dr. Thrun can be a little superficial, but the lectures and materials provided by the TAs and Dr. Summit are pretty good and go more in depth into, into the actual material. So to delve into the prerequisites listed on the course website and on the syllabus, number one, do you have programming experience, preferably in Python? I would say that programming experience is definitely required, otherwise this class would be very difficult. Programming experience in Python is definitely needed, um, or you have to learn it on the spot. It's in Python 3 for all of the assignments, though Python is probably one of the easiest languages to learn if you already know a programming language. The second question, do you have a strong understanding of linear algebra? Linear algebra is definitely required since there's quite a lot of matrices um, in the concepts, though I don't think you necessarily need to have a strong level. You probably just need to know like transpose and you know multiplication with matrices and stuff like that. Do you have a strong understanding of probability? Again, I don't think it's required to have a strong understanding necessarily, though um, probabilistic inference obviously requires some probability knowledge, but just like Bayes' rule and stuff like that. Number four, have you taken any courses either from your undergraduate studies or MOOCs in machine learning, computer vision, or robotics? Question mark. I had done none of those, though I did do one undergrad course in AI, but we didn't focus on machine learning, and I don't think that was a problem at all. I didn't find this course to be unbelievably difficult or anything, so I think you can kind of disregard that requirement. I think the general consensus is that this class is an easy A, and I definitely agree. Uh, it's not easy in the sense that the projects are definitely relatively difficult, but it's easy in the sense that you have multiple submissions to Gradescope, and if you just do the projects and you don't miss any of them, you should be able to get an A, or in many cases a very high A as well. So the grading policy is as follows. 
Six problem sets and a syllabus quiz makes up 20% of the grade and you should be able to get 100% on this section of, the, of your grade very, very easily considering problem set answers can be found online. The syllabus quiz is a gimme. So you pretty much have a free 20% right there. PID mini project, meaning proportional integral derivative controller is 10% of your grade. And you should be able to get relatively close to 100 on that. I don't know, if, I don't think I did. Um, but since it's grade scope, you can submit it, see what you get, and if you decide to work on it more, you can do it. If not, that's fine. Coleman filter, particle filter, search, and slam project are each worth 15%, and that makes up 60% of your grade. Again, these are projects that you can submit to grade scope multiple times, and you have the ability to know what your grade is before you actually get it entered into the grade book. And then final exam, 10%. So like I mentioned, if you get 100% on all of the other items before the final exam, you don't even need to take the final exam. And I did take the final exam because unfortunately I was at an 89 before the final, so I had to take it and get a couple questions right. But even then, the final exam was not very difficult. So the first project that you do is called Asteroids, and it is the common filter project. Essentially the premise of the project is that we are in outer space, there is an asteroid field, and given the motion model, we first try and use Coleman filters to localize the asteroids and predict where they are going to be at the next timestamp. And then the second half of the project is to navigate our spacecraft from one end to the other end of the asteroid field, and of course that relies on knowing where the asteroids are and will be. So overall, it's a pretty fun project and it's a really good first project, in my opinion, um, because there's a turtle visualizer and you get to see your spacecraft kind of weave through the different asteroids as well as where your common filters thinks the asteroids are. Uh, this is a 15 to 20 hour project, as are most of the projects. And I do want to say that the TA provided some very useful documentation on explaining how the common filters work because the provided lectures from Dr. Thrun kind of glossed over the role of the different matrices. Um, so it definitely requires some help from the TAs and the actual instructional, instructional team outside of Dr. Thrun. So the second project is called Mars Glider and that is the particle filter project. So we are given a map and the altitude measurements and distance to ground measurements of a glider. And our goal is to localize the glider onto the map. So there's two parts of this project as well. The first step is just localizing the glider. And the second step is to navigate the glider to a specific drop zone. And of course, to navigate the glider to a specific area, we have to have a general idea of where it is. So again, this was probably around a 15, 20 hour project. Um, and I definitely really enjoyed it because there's a fun visualization aspect to it as well. So the mini project is on PID controllers, proportional integral derivative controllers. And basically what we do in this mini project is there's a simulated turbo pump and we use the PID controller to control the rocket's thrust and we want to maintain it at a certain velocity. This is my least favorite project by far because there is a ton of parameter tuning, so it's, it's not quite guess and check, but there is a lot of, you know, change it by a little bit, run it, see how it goes, and that can definitely take a long time. Um, there also isn't as much of a, like, fun visualization aspect of it, because essentially you basically just run it with different parameters, see the output, run it again, see the output, so there isn't like any live, like watching something being navigated or anything like that. The next project is a search project and it is called Warehouse. We are given a map and we need to find the optimal path to retrieve boxes. And there's two parts and the first part is A star and the second part is dynamic programming. I actually really enjoy this one because I find search problems to be pretty fun and they definitely have applications well beyond just robotics. And I would say this one is probably around a 15, 20 hour project again. There is a fun little visualization 
but you don't get to see your agent move in the map, so it's not quite as fun to watch your programs being run as the first two projects. Last but not least, we have GemFinder. GemFinder is the SLAM project of the class, SLAM being simultaneous localization and mapping. So we are not given a map, but we need to localize our agent after a series of movements and measurements. And then once we do that, we can collect the list of gems that we are required to pick up from our world. This is the final project, but it's not any more intensive in my opinion than any of the other projects and took around 15-20 hours again. So at this point, if you've already done all the projects and scored around 100 on each, I do want to point out that you can get above 100 on a couple of the projects, though they're usually capped at like 102. So if you have an average of 100 on all of the projects, then at this point you already have an A in the class at a 90 and you don't even need to take the final. Unfortunately, I had an 89.5 or 89.6 and they do not round up, so I had to take the final but I only had to get a couple questions right. The final itself was not very difficult, it was only like 20 or 25 questions, mostly multiple choice, some with like free response where you fill in you know, the probability of this, the probability of that, or filling in this matrix with that. And if you do need a good grade on the final because you didn't do well on one of the projects or something, I do think the final is a pretty easy way to make up for it. Overall, I did really enjoy this class. My complaints, I guess, are that sometimes the lectures kind of dance around these techniques and don't explain the math behind them or why they work. Another complaint, I guess, is the lectures are pretty old and they were still operating on like Python 2.7, even though nowadays everyone's on Python 3.8. Um, but overall, I still really enjoyed it and would recommend it to anyone who wants to get their feet wet in artificial intelligence before taking the actual artificial intelligence course. Thanks.